Right guys, every equation for enthalpy changes, let's do this. Now there's three ones to begin with that is gonna be all for finding out the enthalpy change of reaction. And that's just gonna be given the symbol delta H for enthalpy. This H is enthalpy. This is just the delta symbol for change, okay? That's what I'm gonna be doing all these for. It just depends what you've been given in the question as your data, okay? So the first one is gonna be for formation. So I'm just gonna give that a, a F right here. Second one is gonna be combustion. Third one is gonna be um, bond dissociation enthalpy. Okay, I'm gonna give that a capital D here, but you can use a few different symbols for that one, okay? So the enthalpy change when we're dealing with formation is gonna be the sum of enthalpy of formation. I'm gonna write it out at the top, and then I'm going to write it out as symbols just below it. So you can use the shorthand if you want. And this is gonna be the sum of the enthalpy of formation of products minus the sum of enthalpy change of formation for reactants. Super easy one to remember. Do your best to remember this. They, they are very similar, like all three of these are very similar, just um, switched around in some cases. So if I wanted to look at the symbol version, so like the shorthanded one that you can just whack on the page to do it as quickly as possible, it's gonna be enthalpy change of reaction equals the sum of enthalpy of formation products minus the sum enthalpy of formation reactants. Okay, the R and P are obviously reactants and products. Okay, so you chuck that on your page, you do the sum, do the sum, minus one from the other, and that would give you enthalpy change. Okay, right, let's do the next one, combustion. Okay, so enthalpy change of reaction again is gonna be the sum of enthalpy change of combustion. Combustion. And this isn't products this time, it's flipped around. So we're gonna be doing reactants. Okay, minus the sum of enthalpy change combustion again, combustion, and this is now gonna be products. Okay, so you can see how they're super similar. You just flip them around, and this is all to do with the Hess cycle and the root of reaction. I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but essentially that's all you need to remember is this is the equation. So let's do the symbol one again, just to make things a bit quicker for you guys when you're actually doing your calculations. It's gonna be enthalpy change of reaction equals sum of enthalpy combustion reactants this time as the positive minus the sum of enthalpy combustion products. Easy, okay? Let's go on to the final one here. This is gonna be all to do with mean bond enthalpies or mean bond dissociation, however you wanna remember it. Basically the same thing, just different words. Oh, let's go back to our nice greeny blue. Got to stay consistent, <laughs> okay. Right, this is gonna equal, oh no, equal, there we go, go back to black, sum of the bond energies broken. Bond energies broken minus sum of bond energies formed or bond energies made. I'm gonna put formed, I like formed better, but however you remember it is all good. Another way to remember this, and this is actually how I personally remember it, is instead of it being the sum of the bond energies broken minus the sum of the bond energies formed, to keep it in the same format as these two, what I do is I just think of it as reactants because when you're um, carrying out a reaction, the bonds are broken within the reactants. So all of the different atoms or elements are broken apart and then they're going to be reformed in the product side. Okay, in terms of enthalpy changes anyway, okay? So that's the way I like to remember it, but whatever works for you is all good. Now, let's do some symbols for this, okay? Enthalpy change of reaction again equals the sum of D, this is bond dissociation. You can write it as BD, you can write it as capital B, capital D. However you remember it, I just do it as capital D for now. Um, I'm not that consistent, I'm not gonna lie. As long as you get the formula correct and you use it to carry out the correct calculation, you're gonna be all good to go. And then we're gonna put B here. This is for broken minus the sum of bond association energy for formed, okay? Or if you wanna remember it the way I do with reactants and products, it's gonna be enthalpy change of reaction equals sum of bond association energy for reactants minus products. Okay, it's just squeezing on the end there. Now last point here, last point here, this 
right? Really important to remember this must, 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 must be gases. This equation only works if every substance in the equation or the reaction, I should say, is a gas. Okay, so never use this if there's solids, liquids, uh, solutions present, only gases, right, guys? But normally, they're not going to trip you up. They're going to give you stuff with gases so that you can actually use this. Otherwise, it's just going to be pointless, right, in your exam. Right, three equations done. Let's move on to the next one here. Now, this is going to be for calorimetry. Okay, Q equals MC delta T. This Q, you may see it as lowercase, you may see it as capital. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I always do it as lowercase. Actually, I'm not consistent. Sometimes I put it as capital. But basically, in this case, I'm going to use lowercase. And we're going to talk about what each of these things are. Okay, lowercase or capital Q is going to be your energy change. Energy change or energy or heat energy. It's going to be called a few different things. But this is measured in joules. That is our unit for Q right here. M is going to be the mass of solution. Okay, mass of solution. This is going to be in grams. Delta T, this is going to be your temperature change. Temperature change. Okay. Woo, sweet. Okay, now temperature change, it doesn't matter if you're in Kelvin. Now, because it's a capital T, I'm going to stick with good old Kelvin here. But let's say we go from 25 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is a change of plus five. So our delta T is plus five, right? Now, if we convert this into Kelvin, it's going to be 298 Kelvin to 303 Kelvin. What's the difference between here and here? It's plus five. Okay. So if you think about the temperature change in degrees Celsius and they, te they tell you that the temperature increased by 5 degrees Celsius, you do not then convert this to um, 273 plus 5, so 278, okay? The temperature change is not 278 Kelvin, okay? That is just 5 degrees Celsius in Kelvin, all right? I know that may be a bit confusing, but hopefully that makes sense to you. So you can essentially use either unit here when you're converting, um, when you're doing temperature changes, it worked out the same thing. Um, but if you want to work out, like for whatever reason, like final temperature or something, um, the standard unit we're going to use is Kelvin, right? So just keep that in mind. C, this is the specific heat capacity of water. This one's not that important, to be honest. It's always given to you, 4.18. And that is, I believe, joules per gram per Kelvin, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's correct. Yeah, joules per gram per Kelvin. If we look at this, the units of joules, our energy unit is consistent here. Our unit for grams is consistent here. And our unit for temperature is consistent here. Did I say unit for grams? Unit for mass, okay? So all our units are consistent, so we're good to go, all right? Now... What you want to do is, let's move this around. So let's actually delete this off the page. Delete. And we're going to talk to, talk a little bit about how we actually convert Q into enthalpy changes. So what is, this is what you're going to have to do basically in every question. All you do is divide by moles and convert. Okay, so what do I mean here? If our Q is joules, what is the unit of our enthalpy change? I haven't actually gone through this, but enthalpy change has a very specific unit kilojoules, so energy per mole. So the energy per one mole, okay? So we have to convert from here to here. Kilojoule per mole, if it's not written as um, to the minus one, it looks like this, right? Kilojoules divided by moles, kilojoules per mole. So what you do, right? This is really important. You, you divide by a thousand, or in other words, times 10 to the to the uh, minus three to convert joules into kilojoules, right? So that's our first unit ticked off. And then you're gonna calculate the moles of the substance, okay? Let's say it was like 0 0.382 moles. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do your kilojoules that you just converted, you're gonna divide it by your moles, and that is gonna give you your enthalpy change in kilojoules, our energy unit, per mole of substance that we dealt with in the calculation. Okay, and that is how you convert Q into delta H, okay? Similarly, if you can do it in either way, right? You can do the um, divide first, so you can do joules divided by moles, which would give you joules per mole, 
okay, and then convert it by dividing by a thousand to give you kilojoules per mole. It's up to you. It's honestly up to you. Okay, but just remember that you need to convert this to this and you'll be good. If you want to grab yourself a free PDF formula book, check out the link down below. And you're going to be able to grab all my free resources as well. If you're struggling with chem and you want to boost your grade as quickly as possible, check out my tuition offers down below as well. But regardless, this video should help you and put you in a good place to solve all the calculations you need to.